Hello, everyone. So what I did is I changed the settings uh, coming in this time, hopefully trying to avoid everybody just uh, having a lot of background noise. So if you'd like to be seen, why don't you go ahead and start your video? That's, I'm gonna go over the tools for just a second. Make sure that everybody can hear me. So actually on the chat box, why don't you go ahead and write in whether or not you can hear me. I know we're still a few minutes early. So um, I just wanna make sure that all of our tools are working. Hi, Roberta and Doreen, uh, Franz, Francis. <laughs> So nice to see you and Marty. That's yes. Hi. Yes. I want to tell you it's pronounced Francoise. Okay, I was, uh, I have some, I was a little no. concerned that I'd be saying it a, in a different way. France, Francoise. Birgit, I have something for you. It's the phonetic of my name. You, you think of France, my country, then you think of Sue like Sue Ellen, and then you think of to be in the past, which is was. France, Sue, was. Francoise. 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 Oh, gosh. Oh, um, I'm sorry. You, I you do everything to be kind to us, and with my name, I was terrible to you. Oh, well, you know, really, honestly, like when I have workshops, I, I'm just like, um, my name's Birgit, but I don't expect everybody to get that. So it's like anything they say that's close is good. <laughs> well, I made a mistake on your name. It was late at night and my best friend's name is Bridget. Oh. So I make a confusion. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of uh, Bridget, Birgit and all that. So what I'm so glad that? that you're joining us, you know. Oh. But it, glad to... it's a, how are you doing? Oh, fantastically well. I was completely frustrated before I took your lesson because I didn't want, I couldn't paint. I couldn't do anything. Everything was wrong. I didn't know how to start. I was completely lost. And now I only feel like painting every day. Mm. I do everything. And wetting when painting was really difficult for me. Mm. I never done it before and the way you explain it you are just incredible I, um, I didn't have another lesson now with someone else because it's so interesting you explain everything we can do it as much as we want oh i'm really grateful really so you. well your feedback helps me you know knowing oh, okay. so but you deserve it you deserve it really what you do for us, for everybody, and you, uh, you're happy when we do well, even though it's not perfect. You never, you never have negative um, expressions, or it's always to push us. Well, it's, honestly, I'm not a perfect person. <laughs> well, uh, you're a very good teacher. I, can tell you. I don't know you personally, but I was a teacher as well. I used to go to language school, and you have to be generous to do that. Oh, oh, I can't see you anymore. Ah, that's Catherine. No? I, well, wait a minute. I just want to make sure if people are joining in, if you have background noise, go ahead and mute yourself. Yes. But, um, but um, okay, it's so Francois. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with myself that I got that. Oh my gosh. And. Uh, <laughs> But I love, as you know, I love doing this. And um, we do have some background noise. So I wanna make sure that who's ever not talking, uh, mute yourself because I'm trying to find who it is and I can't do that. But so one thing that happens, you know, like, like I love painting obviously, and I love sharing what I do. And I get so excited in the ideas of how to share it. And I never thought I was a techie nerd, but I guess I am. And I love it. And I, uh, I just love to explore how to share more information with you. And one thing I figured out today, 
uh, was that I think I can, um, I might be able to do, I want to tell you the difference between a webinar and a meeting. A webinar is that you won't see each other. And a meeting is where you have the option to see each other. And now in case you've never joined us before, so you know where your tools are because I, we have the uh, speaker on the bottom left hand side, there's the video if you want to be seen, and in the upper right hand corner you can press gallery view to see all the students that are participating if you'd like. So that's, uh, okay I'm just going to go ahead and try to mute some people that have come in, but so anyway the point of all that was that I, I think that I can, I want to do some webinars and I might be able to do some Facebook Live things. So I'm gonna, it's just the, the nerdy side of me that gets really excited about all this. So anyway, before we get started, okay, it's the top of the hour and um, it's two o'clock and it is February 21st, I believe. And uh, I'm so excited that you're all here. And so before we go and get started, why don't you go ahead and write in the chat box so I know that it's working for you. And then we have a lot of things to cover today. And if you have any questions, like tell me where you're coming from. And we know that Francoise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be practicing that name, uh, is from France. And uh, how about, and we have Kat, I know Kat's here. And hi Kat from, um, uh, I think it's uh, Victoria, and uh, <laughs> hi, and anybody else that would, and we, I see Mary Allison, she's from uh, the Seattle area, okay, and if, and Anne from Sonoma, California, and if anybody else wants to say anything, you're welcome to unmute yourself, it's just in general that we have it muted, so we don't hear the dogs, the kids, and you know, whatever else, or like the what it, gardening whatever else is going on in the background oh we have doreen from brisbane australia that's exciting and um hi doreen nice to see you i see that you've got your headphones on i should have that too <laughs> i i have earbuds but they make me crazy so it's so nice to see you okay and we have um roberta from terrace of uh, northwest bc that's that's uh, Northwest BC. Where is that? Where where are you coming from? I live. Uh, Terrace is about a hundred miles in from the coast, right about the middle of BC. Okay, I've been to Prince George before. Is that right? Like okay, that? yeah, that's about the dead center of BC. So okay. you'd go pretty well straight west to get to Terrace. Okay, really excited. You know, I just I just love. I just love that. What's so nice about this is that we can all come from everywhere. And that's what I just love. Anyway, okay. Now, does anybody have any questions before we really move on? Um, uh, you can either put it in the chat box or unmute yourself. Anything um, that is just burning to get out of you? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Then what I'm going to, we've already gone over the tools and that would be the, our platform tools is that there's the mic in the lower left and there's the camera in the lower left. And if you cannot, if you want to be seen and we can't see you on uh, start your video, which is on the bottom left. And if you want to see everybody that's in the class on the upper right, go ahead and click gallery view and then you'll see everybody. So, and thank you, Francoise, because uh, I, I really appreciate it. I just get so excited thinking of ways to share information with you because that stimulates my creativity too. So that's really what that's about. And so anyway, all right. So uh, as we know, everybody's gonna be in a different place in the course. We've got people that are going faster and slower. And where we're going to uh, start this week is we have our crashing waves, the sea foam, the beach scene, and then anything else that came in later, what we'll do is um, review that at the end of the course. So I'm just gonna double check everybody here. So, and then also 
when I, the difference between a webinar and the meeting is that I don't have to try to go in and mute you because you will all be muted and then you can always do a chat. So that is something I'm going to do in the future. All right, the meeting should go about an hour. And again, you know, I always go a little bit longer. So that way, if we have any questions, I can address that or paintings that I missed. I'll, I'll do my best to get to that. And uh, the course ends February 26th, and I'm trying to decide if we're going to do one more meeting. And actually, what you could do is, in your chat box, let me know if you would like one more meeting after this. And what's happening with the app? We've got some problems with the app right now. And um, they had to take it down, and they're restructuring it. And uh, they're waiting for it to uh, be... Uh, approved by iTunes again, and then it's going to go back up. And they were hoping that it would be by the end of the day today, but it might take up to two weeks. That's what they're saying. So if you're having problems with it, you should be able to see your free course, if you have a free course, but the paid courses, I guess you can't see that. And another really exciting thing that I'm super excited about is that I am starting to add closed captions to some of the lessons. So I think that way it opens it up to more people and not necessarily only that, is that, you know, as we get older, I can't hear everything. <laughs> so it's nice to have the closed caption option for people. And if you have friends that can't hear, because that has been one thing that has, um, uh, been a sad thing for me when I have had some students that couldn't hear, you know, now we are starting to work on that. So, um, all right, just checking those uh, questions there. And for the most current news, so we have a, cl a closed captioning, super excited about that. And the upcoming courses, as a lot of you know, is that the ORCID's behind me. That's coming up. Uh, it's an eight-week interactive course. Starts March 1st through April 26th. And for you that are in my school, you would have received an email for a 30% discount. And if there's a, if we have anybody that's listening to this that's um, not in the course or in the school, I can give them a general code, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Also, we have another White Flowers course starting March 15th through April 26th. And there is a, a, a general code for both of those. If you're not in the school, will be uh, save 2518, uh, and then you can get a 25% discount. Now, there's one thing I thought about, you know, I with this class is like, how can I continue that um, momentum? Let's say you're not interested in flowers. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you something is that I just created this last night and I am going to um, do, let's see, where are we? There we go. I have just opened up Try to get it. Oh, just I'm trying to open up all these windows here and hopefully not get rid of the windows that I need. What I'm going to do right here is I've done, I've created this one here Waves to Water, Land and Sea Level Two. That way, if you're interested and you want to keep on going, you can join me. This is going to be a four week course meeting once a week and what we'll do is explore how to take photos and then turn them into your paintings. So that way, not just only are you following, you're not really following a lesson plan like you have in this last course. You will, um, let's see here, let me just take a look at that. So you can see all the things that we have there. Okay, now I'll get off. So. What I wanted to do was try to figure out how to show you how to take your own photographs and interpret them into paintings. So the plan would be that I have an ebook and it would be, let's say 30 pages. It's probably gonna be more than that, but 30 pages, we'd break it down into sections. And then the first section, you can choose whatever you want to out of there, but I'll give you a demonstration. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss how to break things down. And, um, you can always submit your own your own photographs and we will try to get to, I don't know how this is all gonna go. I'm really excited about it, but just to give you an idea about that. 
anyway, you can look at that. And here's a discount for you on that, and that's a 20% discount. The prerequisite for that course is that you have to have either taken waves and water or atmospheric landscape or rocks, sand, and sea glass because I want you to have the basic techniques down. And so I thought that was kind of a really exciting thing to do, but if you're interested, you can join me. I really hope you do. So anyway, the code for that, for 20% on that, would be SAVE2018. Oh gosh, that sounds funny, isn't it? SAVE2018. All right. So two, uh, SAVE2018. Oh my gosh. All right, and then when it comes to the eBooks, I just wanted you to, um, I just wanted to talk about the, um, like the Orchid course that's coming up. There's a large eBook that's in there and there are lots of wonderful uh, photographs for you to take the techniques and then move them into your own paintings. So, but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the copyrights. They're there for you to use. Absolutely. Do whatever you want, interpret them, and we'll walk through the course. It'll be a lot of fun. And, but when it comes to like what, like what can you do with them? When it comes to publications, you don't want to ever really use somebody else's reference photo unless you license it. So, because publications want to see your artistic vision and your creativity, not necessarily you copying something else. So I just want to encourage you not, you know, to to take whatever's in those eBooks and then turn them into your own vision. And also when it comes to shows and competitions, just so you know, prospectuses and show prospectuses do not usually allow you to use somebody else's reference photo. So make sure that you check your show prospectus. And all this is very important information for you to know. And some people get upset about it, um, but it, I also have to pay attention to it myself. We, we all learn by copying other people, but really for you to find your own vision as an artist is to take, like, like look behind me here, all right? That uh, pink orchid right there, and then we've got that, that green orchid right up there. So that's basically the same image, it is. What it is is using your creativity and changing it. Even though the composition is ba basically the same in that, I want, I want to make that shift in your mind uh, from like looking at one color and shifting it into another and then or taking a photograph from an ebook and how to alter the composition and turn it into something that's completely your own. Anyway, I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say there. And um, let's see, is there anything else? I need? Anybody have any questions on that? So, okay, great. All right. Okay. Then. I do. Okay. Would, like, if I did a painting from one of your lessons and I just loved it and someone said they wanted to buy it, I can't sell that to them, can I? Well, you know, they really need to know that it was a lesson mm -hmm. and Officially, you should not be selling uh, something that you've done in a course. Why don't you email me? And whenever That's what I'm going to ask if 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 a person should just email the artist and request it, and whatever the artist says, fine. You know what? I think that's actually a, a really good idea because that way you'll have written permission. Yeah. So, and because I would never, I would never sell anything I did from a lesson because. To me, it's not mine, it's yours, and I'm copying you. Well, you know? what you know, what happens is sometimes people think, uh, well, the point of giving you the lessons are for you to learn the techniques of how I apply, how I got there. So, you know, and what, like we've talked about probably in this course further um, in past meetings, is that it's, a lot of times I will get an email from somebody that'll see the composition that, you know, and it's not good for you because you don't want somebody to, uh, 
to contact you about that. I mean, I've got stories, believe me, I've got stories and I don't want it to be a bad experience for you. You know, yeah. even like, like somebody will say, Oh, I took Birgit's course and you don't need that. So just be aware of that. We can always talk further about this in another meeting, but I, does that make sense to you or do you, does anybody have any feelings on that? Yes, I have one thing I wanted to tell you, Birgit. In fact, I have lots of ideas. I know what I want to do. I like the technique. And thanks to you, I was able to learn the technique, but I will do my own because of course, we don't want to copy. It's a shame, you, and especially if you decide to sell it, people will notice and you're fired, definitively. Yeah. We all learn, we all, the masters have learned from imitating others. That's how we break it down, you know? Yes, but if you imitate people and you sell what you have imitated, mm -hmm. you are fired as an artist. Mm -hmm. So we but, all know that. So well, you know what's wonderful about this particular class is that uh, like this class, I can give you a foundation, but there are so many directions that you can go in with this. And so it, it really doesn't apply that much to this class, but I wanted to just discuss like the, like, uh, you know, just, just taking, I think that's a good thing to discuss in general that we talk about copyrights because yes. anyway, it's a, it's a very long, complicated uh, subject and I think that that we can talk about it more on another time does that sound good at least I think that I just wanted to touch a little bit on that no it's good to let people know about that because it's important but I think uh, as far as I know from the people who attend your lessons they they are happy to do their own most of them sometimes do it huh? they don't uh, need really copy what you do so well you know what we we'll talk more about that in another meeting uh, because that's not as relevant to what we're doing today but like you know we'll talk more about that in another one because we'll take time i want to get to the paintings now does that sound good okay Perfect. so what we're going to do i've given you all the basic information there and um about all the updates and discounts and let's start looking at some paintings does that sound good all right and nobody seems to have any uh, other questions so let's go ahead and take a look so i'm thinking we're going to go ahead and start with oh there's so many things here let's start with the beach scene mm. actually no we did some of that last week so i'm going to go ahead and start with this I'm, i'll come back to that at the end all right, because actually now with this, I obviously this is a photograph and whoever sent that in, I'm sorry, I don't have the name attached to it right now, but I am um, really excited about this lesson because I know a lot of you were probably extremely frustrated with this, but uh, you really did get it because I wanted to get you away from looking at a photograph and just working with the shapes and movement and you really all are all were successful did you feel a little crazy by any chance did anybody like i i'm actually i can see you there like did you all feel good about that or were you incredibly frustrated you i don't think i can see the chat right now but uh, i can see your faces there yeah so all right, so let's go ahead and look at this. All right, so some people were saying they didn't really think that their waves looked like um, the example, but really, if we look at, oh, I do see a chat here. Okay, okay. Oh, Marty said she loved the challenge, which is wonderful. So thank you, Marty. I loved this, this exercise here, because now if we took, this this photograph right here and if we just take a couple sections from this you can see hopefully i can see that there right there and here how that could be applied into something 
something similar to this bottom one. We're looking for the wave, for the, for just the feeling of it. Anyway, we're going to go through this very quickly, and you can always just break it down. Look at that. Okay, and let's see. So we right here, you could use a little bit more definition in some of these areas, and I would try to eliminate some of those brush strokes. Try to get a little more of a. Um, a range of value in there. Let's see if I can find an example here. Okay, this one has a little darker color underneath there, a little darker color right down here, and we've got our white water right up here. So we're just not trying to think too much about, when we're really looking at it in our mind, thinking, oh, that's supposed to be a wave, it doesn't necessarily look like a wave. It's very abstracted. So that's why you need to really step away from this. And this here, this is a wonderful one. You've got the darker colors in here. The only thing to make this uh, just a little different is I would soften some of those hard lines a little bit, and then you get more of that white water in there. And here, using the dry brush technique on top, that works too, but you could always just soften an edge here or there. This, this looks good right up here. You could use a little more shading. I think you can see my little mouse moving around here. and right through there and let's say if I'm looking at this one over here I would say where do I have let's see we've got um, make sure your mics are muted so I'm going to go ahead and grab a tool so let's see we've got we've got something here if I wanted this to stand out more I would go maybe a little darker through there maybe I would go if I wanted a little just start looking for areas to pull out. Okay, something like that. And then you would go ahead and just soften a few edges like right through here so it's not so straight because we wouldn't see that so straight in uh, real life. So you can see how it breaks it up just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead here. We have a chat that came in. Oops, get through this. What does this say here? Roberta says that she was surprised to see that hers actually look like waves. And one thing that is mo the most important things is that she's learned to soften the edge. Exactly. So that would change all of this. And then in here, what I really like with this one is the this wave here has such a wonderful range of color. And this lighter green on top, you've got great white water through here, and a good idea of, uh, well, your spray is nice in there. And I can see that you started to put the people in, but it looks like you might have wiped them out a little bit. So it could use just a little more definition. And let's see let go through here and let me think where do i want to get some definition here okay so let's see if we go because it's all a little blurry up here you've got some hard edges right along the bottom edge of the wave and this is looking wonderful and here it looks like you tried to get some movement going into the wave but unfortunately it's uh, too many brush lines so when you get those brush lines in soften an edge of it so it breaks up that pattern and i love this color right through here and i really like this area up on top and you've got some wonderful white water going on so if i really wanted to push that forward i would just give hints of you see i'm just kind of uh, darkening a few areas right there and Let's see if I wanted to just have maybe a little bit of that. I, I see what you're doing with those brush strokes. I'm trying to give it a little more of a ran, random pattern in here. And back here, because it gets a little lost through here, you might want to use a, okay, I'm going to make a big line. It's not going to make a, maybe a lot of sense, but if I really want to bring this this spray out what i might do is use a brush on this side on dry paper and try to capture that edge okay and then with a clean brush not with color i would go ahead and just try to soften this side out and leave this side dry so i can get some shape of that spray coming through there 
And then right through here, you could go ahead and maybe bring that out a little bit more. And I'm thinking the bottom of the wave could be a little darker. Also, in um, I didn't I didn't show you that ebook. I'll show that to you when I am done with this. Okay, so that is wonderful. You've got some great colors, and these are great. Love this. This is wonderful through here. Great color up here. You've got this is that crashing wave, that more abstracted one, and this is interesting down here. You can see how having that softer edge really helps it doesn't stop the eye from uh, from just looking at that straight line you start to see the entire wave this is wonderful and i love your white water right through here and that lighter edge on the top on the crest of the wave excellent all of this is very wonderful one thing i would do is be careful again about having that repetitive pattern of the brush stroke so be careful with that but this is wonderful great colors through here and this is wonderful too what i would do is be careful of that hard line through here because then we see those hard, you know, we just see that, uh, especially since there are two of them, the evenness of them. We're looking at one and two. Break it up because you can see here, you have a hard line, but your eye isn't really drawn to that because it's, it's just one single line. It's not an even number. And the same here. This is wonderful too. That stands out. Um, so just soften up an edge right through here. That would be, let's go ahead and do that just break it up a little bit so that way we're not going to look so much at that hard line okay i hope that that works it works for me i can see it and let's see and this is wonderful down here so this is great you're doing a wonderful job okay and that's it on uh, all of these so what i'm going to do for just a moment I'm going to show you that ebook so you could get an idea of what in the world I'm talking about for the waves of water. I think I've got it right here. I'm working on this, so it's not done. But just so because like within the course that we're doing right now, I we used to be able to upload reference photos and you could really see them, but they all come out as thumbnails now, the way the uh, the platform has changed. So now even if we look at this, you can see that we've got all that rough water down here and then you have that darker color right through here and then it lightens up on the top. And there we have that spray right up here. And in fact, I think that that, let's say, if I let's say let's dissect this for just a second, I think that would be wonderful. So you already know how to get this dark um, color in the background. We have that light crest, which would be that white water from that very loose wave we just did. Keep the light tint of color up here, light value, and then gradually increase it into a darker color right along the the middle to bottom, and then right in here you can see how these. Uh, little the little white water the little foam is not straight so that's why we don't necessarily want to have the brush strokes be repetitive and then if you have worked through the course to the section where you've got that um, uh, that very simple reflection that really was about working with the brush strokes and getting it loose in your hand trying to get uh, trying to get more of a, a wave to it, like, you know, a press and release, press and release. So it loosens you up a little bit, not only paint from your fingers, paint from your wrist and from your elbow, use your body when you're painting. Okay, and then let's take a look at the next thing here. So anyway, you get the idea. This, this will give you, I think this is a really neat one. And not, it doesn't only just have waves, it goes down into sunrises, sunsets, on waves, and um, I don't think my computer can keep up with me here. And maybe we'll even address this one with the two children in it, but and the beach. So these are this will give you an idea of the extension course and how to work more with that wet sand reflection and really looking at a photograph and not just a step-by-step uh, -step on how to paint. This will push you into um, 
using your techniques. There we go. This one has uh, some reflections on a lake. And there's another one in here that has, uh, it's not showing up here. But anyway, you get the idea. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into the wave with the foam. And then we'll go, after that, we'll go into the waterfall and crashing waves and beach and so on. And if we need a demonstration, I'm happy to do that. But right now, I think we'll just go ahead and work through all the paintings that have come in. So let's take a look at all of these in this series. Okay, we're just taking a peek through all of them. They're all great. They really are. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the picture for a second. All right. Okay, so now if you have submitted um, earlier than last night, you would have received a little bit of feedback from me. Now, my comments on this one, I love the splash. I love the background here. And we've got some white water up here. I do like this, but as I'm looking at it now, I think that you could actually go ahead and maybe try to retrieve a little bit of that white by, if you want, maybe just try to soften some of those lines by using that Mr. Clean eraser or a brush. It's just the Mr. Clean eraser. The magic eraser just takes less time. So if you eliminated some of those lines, you would get your a little bit of white back. You don't have to make them all go away, but just lighten them a little bit. And through here, because that would also, because my concern with this one was that I thought a lot of the um, brush strokes were pretty much the same size. And you've got a generous amount of water in here too, but I wanna see a little more randomness to the type of stroke. And that means size and that's basically the size. I'm thinking, is it the shape or the size? And I think pretty much the size. So also you could go ahead, let's see if we have it all. I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this wider. That's why I'm making all these squiggles in here. And then let's go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow right down here. Just to, now you don't have, we don't wanna make it really defined. Now, what I would suggest is using the belly of the brush. So, I'm going to make a little arrow. So, your handle is going to be up this way. Your hand is this way, right up here, coming from the corner. The belly of the brush is going to be down here. And then, what I want you to do is just try to skip along that edge, leave this area dry, the colors being applied along the bottom. Okay, I know this might make you feel a little crazy but you're just gonna go ahead and get your color along the bottom. Uh, let me get rid of a couple things here. So your color's down here, and then this is dry up on top, and then soften the bottom edge here and there. But I'd like you to break up that line, and then you'll get more depth in here. Let's go in there, just a little bit. And these are good. I think that this is good right through here. I'm trying to think, do I want to see a little more of a, just a randomness in the stroke? I think just lighten the upper right-hand corner a little bit, break up those lines, get a little bit of a shadow down here. And you can leave this alone if you want to, but I, that's what I would do to change it a little bit. Okay, that way you'll get a little more definition. Like, you'll get definition without it being photorealistic. Okay, and then here, oh, so here's the good example right here. We've got the darker color on the bottom and then soften the edge. Now you've got this really beautiful um, straight line through here, but if you wanted this to be more random, more rough, like that really rumbling water, you would have done exactly like what I suggested by having, let's see, if I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this a brush again. So let's say, use this color. Let's say this is your brush. This is your handle. And this is your tip through there. Instead of, because I think that you ended up going this way, that's why you ended up getting 
a straight line through here. You've got the very tip instead of using the belly of the brush. So you didn't get that irregular edge. And let's see, let's get on there again. So that would just break up that straightness of that line. I see that you ended up using the masking here, which is a good, uh, a good way to resolve that. That's wonderful. So I think that worked out very nicely. And what you could do if you wanted to is um, maybe even apply another layer of color on some of these. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, oops. You're good? Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but just okay. looking at this painting you've got up here, I wanted to share what I thought of, of a way to do the, um, the little white things would be to use saran wrap. Oh, that's a great idea too. Yeah, that's a yeah. great idea. I love that. So that would be, that would give you a more, but the problem with that too actually is that it would be more, uh, it would be a very good idea, but it would be a more abstracted because it wouldn't give you that round look to it. But what, uh, I think that's an excellent idea and I think that's one to keep in mind. It would be worth a try, I think. Absolutely. But so what I wanted to show you here is like you can see that we just see all these lines through here. But what you could do is just if you broke it up with another layer of color just on top of some of them, then you create a little more depth in there. Do you see what I'm saying? Or Roberto, are you still there? Yeah. Hey, Birgit. It's mine. Who is this? It's, it's Laura. Hi, Laura. Is this yours here? Yes. And okay. What a great idea by the saran wrap or doing the extra layer here? Extra lines. Oh you my gosh, not, it just really goes deep. You don't necessarily need to put, well, you know, this would be a brush stroke and then you could either leave that edge or you could soften it. But I would do a combination of the hard and soft edge, like, like, like hard through here and then soften a line. That way it doesn't look like a repetitive pattern. So that's what we want to get away from. And actually, now that I'm looking at this right here, I like what you've done here, but I would use the belly of the brush again and then maybe try to grab, you know, what you do basically is you make it a little bit irregular and then that gives it more of that, um, a, a combination of the hard and soft edges really gives it that power. So, but you did a beautiful job. Wonderful Thank colors. You. Thank you. <laughs> did you have any other questions on this? Uh, no, not really. I'm just really impressed by how you can achieve that depth by making those other lines. Well, yeah, it is funny. It it's doesn't amazing. take much. Let's see. No, we have, let's see. I think we have a question that came in. Uh, let's see if I can get to that. Oops. Oh, I see why I can't. Is that I still have my little tools on. Hopefully I can get out of that for a second. Let's see, what is the question here? Oh, uh, are you asking what the belly of the brush is? Do you use the belly of the no, brush? No, I'm just saying, oh. uh, soften the edge number one, use the belly of the brush. Those are birgitisms I'm gonna try to remember. <laughs> Okay, okay, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. So then we'll move on to the next one here. This is such a wonderful painting. All of these are. Uh, let's see, where are we? Right here. Let's make sure that I'm staying right on track here. What's wonderful about this is that transition of color from that dark to that teal to the green. Wonderful color. One thing I'd be careful about is, again, the brush lines. So all that has to do with uh, is having a little more randomness to it. And that example, this is great. Just please understand, this is great. What I want, I think, well, not what I want, what I think would be helpful for you is to use that, um, that exercise with that pole and the reflection because it forces you to change that brush stroke a little bit. Get it looser in your hand. Even though it's loose here, I'm trying to break up the sameness of the stroke. So it's, you're doing great. The color is wonderful through here. Beautiful. And uh, I mean, really, you've got great spray up here. I love the color transition. Wonderful um, white water through here. Beautiful teal. 
And my ocean doesn't look like that. My ocean always seems to be green up here on the Pacific. Where I, well, it's not just the Pacific. What it is is uh, the San Francisco Bay Area lets out, and we don't really get that beautiful transparent blue color. So this is wonderful. All right. And this, I love this one too. Let's go ahead and get break it down a little bit. This is wonderful. You've got some great color in here. I think that you probably used either a neutral tint or a Payne's gray or something. And you handled this so nicely right here with all those smaller um, areas in here. And that would be similar to what I was trying to discuss in that one there. You can see how that's all the same. And look at what she's done there, how much more depth it has in there. She's got wonderful spray up here, great roll to it. And I think there was something that she wasn't terribly happy. I, I, I'm trying to remember from the comment that she made. Let's take a look. Uh, is there again, it, it's me. Uh -huh. That's mine. It's, I didn't get the curl in the wave. Okay, that's what I thought. There, yeah. Right, okay. yeah. So let me find, yeah. So, you know, you've done an excellent job through here. All those different gray, what, what gray did you use? Well, actually it's not gray, it's my cobalt. And um, I had a little Windsor in there. I didn't have any phthalo. Uh -huh. So I put some Windsor in there and uh, sap green and some turquoise. Oh my, wow, yeah. what a different combination, huh? I know, well, I didn't have the phthalo, so I sort of had to invent as I went. Well, you know, uh, uh, for years and years and years, I never used phthalo, and now I'm starting to a little bit. So so to get that curl right through here, you all, so whenever you look at a painting or something that you've done, you know, instead of struggling, thinking, how can you change it into something else? Look at what you have and work with what you've got. So let's take a look at this. So right through here, we've got our tool. So you've got this nice white water right through here and I'm looking at this softer area. I could either try to um, define it and make it more, uh, well obviously defined, but what I'm thinking about is I like this softness. I think it gives the impression of the wave cresting over and that spray. So I would be looking for where can I go darker? Right through here. And I don't really want to get rid of your uh, white water right through there. So maybe what I would do is try to go a little darker through here, probably reshape it a little bit, but I really like what you've got. Okay, so something, as you can see, I'm kind of focusing in this one area just because I don't really want to get rid of this. So, Well, I think you get the idea, I think, right through here. I would bring my darker color, so you've got this up here, that would be that white foam popping up, and then I would use uh, another a softer brush. We Actually, we want to have some definition. That hard line is what's going to make this pop up, and then what you could do down here is just uh, extend it out with clean water so you get that transition. I think, let's see, I mean, I can see it. I'm not too sure if you can see that. Can you see how this is starting to lift up up here? Yeah, I can, I think, um, I think darkening that corner area there, uh, I was actually wondering if I should make, um, like make it a little bit rounder in uh -huh. that area where you just darkened to give more of a curve you could well what you have is great and let's go ahead and do that so i think this color may work this is not a great color for it but no i don't want to use that color let's go ahead what we're okay so what i don't want to see you do is get too carried away with it so let's say if you went ahead add a little bit here add those lines i think this is what you were talking about 
and then just go ahead and soften a little bit. I, I don't know. Maybe just stay with darkening underneath. I think just underneath. Yeah. What do you think? When you see this, let's say, let's go ahead and eliminate that because otherwise you end up getting rid of all that beautiful white water that you've got up here. I think we could go a little bit right down here. Just a little more. It's just, a, it's unfortunate. It's just a little bit pushed over to the edge. So I don't want to get rid of your white water through here, but I'm trying to think about how to push that up. You could even go, I also like your white water back here. You could spray, but let's go a little bit darker. I don't think I like this, but you get the idea through here. It's really in this area. This is wonderful through here, right through here. Does that help? Thank you, yes. Okay, good. You're welcome. All right, so we've got that. Move this over. Okay, we've got a couple more here. All right, and this, this is wonderful color through here. And uh, one thing we've got are those, I can see where they started with the brush strokes through here and it stained the paper, but that's okay. You've got the right idea. And again, we wanna be careful with these areas because they end up being about the same size and we want to have a little more randomness, love the colors that you have. And then we need to go ahead and define that. Um, let's see here. We wanna define that edge to give it that depth. You've already got all this wonderful stuff going on in here and you've got this. So let's see, just try to, Give it a little more of a curl. I don't think you need much in here. Just trying to give a little more definition to it. And since I'm not a surfer, I don't know what a barrel looks like. I'm not in there. Hi, Margaret. This is mine. This is Anne. Hi, Anne. So. I feel like I got the curve either. That's why I stuck those brush strokes in there. Okay, okay. Well, see, you can see that this is too much of the same, so I see. Yeah, well, it got all blurry when I did the cobalt wash. I didn't like it. I wish I'd taken a picture of it before I put the wash over. Okay, so what I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm looking at what you've got here, and, you know, I'm thinking would it be helpful to actually look at a picture of a wave so I see what you mean you did this uh, curling over like that and let's go ahead and try to give a little more I see I'm gonna go ahead and try to I love the colors that you have so I apologize for these cut well I have no choice these are the colors that I have and then we bring it over You see that I'm trying to uh, not be, what I would be thinking as I'm doing this is that I would be applying a brush stroke of color here and there, and then I would be softening an edge, but I'm still just one side. Do you, I know that you've been in my actual workshop, so you know, you've seen me do that, the actual softening. Right. So, and down here, that stroke can break it up a little bit. So let's see, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to imagine what the wave actually looks like right now because I don't have one in front of me. And so this would be breaking, all the white water would be over here. I think what I'll do is Try to, oh, you know, we just have, your colors are wonderful in here. So you know what, I think that, um, I think that we should, we should deal with this later and have, I think it'd be something that we should explore a little more in depth. And because I also, another idea would be, because I think that we should look at a photograph and then try to do it. But as I look at this, if I was gonna be super, super bold with this, I would come back in and let's get, I would lay down a wash of color 
which you could do. I, I think what stopped me was I love your colors. And I would think about, okay, all of this would be a wash of color over all of this area. More a darker on the bottom, but not too dark. And you can get the idea from these little squiggles. And then as it starts to lift up, then it lightens. Does this help you? I, I, can you get a, uh, I know that it's very abstract with all these uh, squiggles, but do you get the idea that this would all be dark and then you'd apply your darker glaze on top of this and then with a damp brush, start to transition into this lighter color. You did this in your other examples, you had that lighter color up on top. Does that? Yeah, but are we trying to keep some foam in there or not? Well, you, oh, here? Well, if it's a nice transparent, uh, well, you can. What I'm trying to do is work it with what you've got. Yeah. So you'd still have it, or you could go ahead and paint around it if you want to, but Personally, I would go ahead and put a little bit of a wash right over it and look at where my white water is and have that uh, stand out more. Does that make sense to you? I'd have to... Yeah, no, actually, I've already flipped it over and I've started over. Okay. <laughs> okay. All righty. And then the last one on this section is I love the amount of water that you've used in here. And uh, let's see, I'm thinking that it could be a little darker up on top. Let's, I'm gonna do the same idea on this. Oops, let's get back into that. All right, and where do we have our white water? We've got a darker area up here. That's looking good, this is looking good. And I might put a little glaze over some of this. Just a little bit of a glaze one more time that will push these areas back it would push these lighter areas back and bring the focus up on these areas i hope you can understand what i'm saying so basically let's push it back is this somebody's painting here is the artist here yeah it's mine and i totally agree Birgitta, or very good sorry what well, i'm gonna say it is good <laughs> at this point i thought Okay, I don't know what to do with this. I'm leaving it. Yeah. I knew that we were way too harsh and bright, but yeah. Let's see. I think I can actually, this, this little tool actually gets a little bit bigger. So if, that way now by going darker here, then the attention starts to go up in this area. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just sort of blend it all. So yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Because otherwise, if we don't have that, then you've got a wonderful amount of water, but then we start seeing those heart, those lines. You know, we're not looking at the form of the wave as much as we are the, um, the actual, we're looking at all the brush, brush strokes that you have. Yeah, so, totally. So when you see me do this little pen with all those squiggles, that's to darken that area. Just glaze over it. It doesn't have to be dark. Just tone down those white areas. For sure. See, now by, you can see by removing that, now we see all those lines. You've got wonderful lines there. We don't want them to disappear. We just want to tone them down and push them back. Yeah. That goes yeah. for anybody else that's got that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, great. Okay, and then, <laughs> all right, let's see. Um, let's see, we've got a couple more here. We went through that, and let's take a look at, we used to have some uh, waterfalls going in here, and let's look at actually the beach scenes. Let's look at that one. Get up here. These are the ones that have come in since our last meeting. All right. So we're just kind of getting a glance over all of them.
and how different they are. What I love is to see everybody's interpretation of the same basic project. I love the birds up here. And a lot of times when the birds are in a painting, they don't look great because they're so even. This turned out very, very well. It looks very nice. Great job with your mingling of color in the background. Your landscape looks good. You've got a great uh, 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 dry brush technique here. And so I see that you're using more purple. So it seems that what you're doing is getting that reflection of the clouds into the ocean. Most times it would be a little more blue than this color, but that can work. And then also this area up here can be a little distracting. So it's just the shape of it. It's not bad at all, but it's just, some, just something that I'm thinking about right here. And then to have your wet sand, since let's say that's uh, a little dark there. Just one thing that I think we could do is if you went ahead up i would i was thinking about having the darker sand on this side but i wanted to define this a little bit so i'm just curious this sand would actually be a little lighter up here let's go ahead and take a look at that and then i'm going to go ahead and try it the other way So this way you can see both. I think this looks better. And we don't want it to be necessarily all straight. So you can, because the waves would come in. And then I would try to clean this up a little bit right through there. But I think that turned out really nice. Nicely here. And then this, this is very interesting too. Great job with your shadow underneath here. Look at that right there underneath the water. And uh, I think this is in a, I would say much more maybe tropical place. Good job with the birds. Their sky is excellent up here. The distance is wonderful. You handled your water beautifully. Your reflection is wonderful. Great job with your reflection in this pool of water here. Your sand is wonderful. Very, very well done. I think you did an excellent job. I like your trees in the distance. Beautiful. Excellent. And your stones. It's gorgeous. Okay, and then this one here too. I love your mingling of color right through here. The only, and your ocean is great. Your uh, white water along the shore is great. It just gets a little lost in this area. So we would just go ahead and maybe add a bottom to the, let's see. Somehow I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So, like you could either, we need a hard line in this area. I don't think that's the prettiest hard line with this pen, but um, let's see if I can get that a little bit larger here. And I'm going to bring some of that color up into here. You've already got it. I'm just trying to get that concept over. So I think. So if I do this, you can see that way we have a separation. There's the water, the foam, or the white water, and then you've got the beach, and then your hill starts. Otherwise, it just has no definition. We just need a little definition in there, or you could even start adding some rocks in there. And you could do that with, and that, that's basically what everybody would do. It's uh, the same idea to all of them. These are, let's say if we added some rocks. Okay, we just want to break up that area. Okay, but you did a great job mingling your color. Okay, and this looks good. Your sky is wonderful. I love this. What I would do next time is just try to soften that hard stroke through here because instead of seeing how wonderful this is up there, you start to see all those hard lines. So we don't necessarily want that. And I would soften a few of these. Even if you leave part of it hard, just skip your brush along, soften that edge a little bit. Your white water looked great. Your landscape looks great. And I do like that mingling right through here, but I really do. I'm thinking, what can we do? We just need something right through here, but I don't necessarily want you to do exactly what I said in the last one. 
trying to get that little tool down. Oops. Go through here. Okay, I am trying to get that tool. Just trying to break it up a little bit through here. It doesn't have to be solid, just a little bit. Also, if we had this be our wet sand, you can, if, so like if you go darker on this side, then that could be more like the reflection, or what you would do is go a little bit more on this side, maybe make your wet sand reflection. Now, Okay, so if this is the, okay, looking at what you have here, I'm looking at this line right through here. I'm going to call this the wet sand reflection, and I'm going to go ahead and try to work with what you've got here. And then now this can start to give the impression of the reflection of the sky in the sand. So hopefully that helps. Okay, and this is wonderful too. We have a lot of action through here, a lot of boldness. And look at what she's done here, he or she has done, with using that knife to get more of that uh, white water back and get some, let's see, we just had a little chat come in. Let's see, where did it go? It disappeared on me, so I can't see that but I'll address that in just a second. Or if you are the artist, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and then I can hear you, but your sky is great. You did a great job through here. This is looking good. The only thing to me is this. I might soften it a little bit because your eye flows in this area. It flows through the rest, but it gets a little tangled up right there. So maybe just soften up that edge a little bit. This is wonderful too. You've got great looseness in it. Let's go back to this. I know we're at the top of the hour here. So for those that you, of you that have to leave, I wanna thank you for joining me. But what I'm gonna do is continue on. We have just a few more left. And I just wanted to thank all of you that, that have to go now. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on. So I love the looseness of this painting here. This is great, and the transparency of color. What's nice is that she's interpreted it into her own style. It's wonderful. There's such freedom and looseness in this. And the same thing with this. I, see, it's, it's interesting how they've taken it, and it's not necessarily looking like uh, the a photograph or anything else. We know what it is. Our imagination can, can just move forward with it and we know it's a beach we know it's clouds and it's it's wonderful all right and then in here too we've got a great job with your clouds this is looking great your landscape's wonderful my only concern when i first looked at this was it, it can go either way i thought wow that's a really strong color right in the center that that can be a little challenging so sometimes you may want to go ahead and try to bring that color somewhere else but since we have such a blue gray uh painting here i love how you handled your landscape and i also do love this color then sometimes you may want to bring that color somewhere else or lift it out a little bit let's let's just take a quick look if i can get that Trying to get those tools down for just a second. I'm wondering if what if we took that color and tried to pull it in somewhere else? That's not as effective, I don't think, as what you have there. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And if we turn this into more of a beach through here, reshape it a little bit because I think there's too much of it going straight across. So just to see that little bit of curve, I think, can, can help. And you can leave it like this. Um, a couple other options is that, because, you know, obviously you followed how I, how I instructed it, but you could, I always like to see what could we do. You could try to even increase waves here by lifting color out you wanted to I think that would be kind of fun because I'd like to break up this area a little bit so this could be done that way or you could um, even add more of a like a channel coming through 
Let's see, we've got a chat here. Let's take a look at this. And oh, okay, we have a couple of people that had to leave, so that's fine. Thank you for joining me today that had to leave. So let's continue with this. All right. And then for the final one in this grouping, got a great blue up here. I think you should bring some of that blue color down into the water here because it's so nice and crisp and clean up here. Great green. I think that would look really nice if you ended up bringing that down. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that. And you could reshape it, get your clouds in here. So again, we have the option of adding waves or just bringing some of that sky reflection down into this area. Okay, but they're looking wonderful. Okay, are there any questions on that? How did, how's that working for you? What do you think on that so far? Does it feel like it's okay, it's good? All right, then let's continue. We have just a few more. Let's look at our waterfalls. Move those over to the side. And I do try to get everybody's painting if, in if possible. So let's look at these. Okay. All right. So again, most people have already um, gotten a, a a, a small critique from me and you, this is excellent you did a great job through there i love the transparency on your strokes and let's see i think that uh let's see i'm wondering if we want to try to get i think it's good as is really and oh let's see i'm wondering do we want any more white water i mean you really have accomplished what we were trying to do i think you did a great job so I'm very happy with what you've done through here. I'm just curious if we got a little more white water back. No, I don't think I wanna see you do anything else to that because you could, you could lift a little color out if you wanted, but you really achieved what we were trying to do. And this is excellent. Beautiful. I definitely oh. want to do it again, Birgit. Uh -huh. because, uh, yeah, uh, there's too much rock and not enough water for me. Yeah. And so I, to do it again where I leave more room for the water because I love this painting from the first time I ever saw it. Oh, I love it too. It's wonderful. And I mean, it's just, it's such a fun technique to do. So, yeah. and you accomplished it. You have wonderful transparency in there. Your colors are great. You've got movement in your water. You've got great splash in there. It's such a nice balance in here. You know, well, I learned so much from watching you mix the paint for the rocks because I realized okay have have the them both mixed well and then more brown on one side and more blue or whatever on the other side and then just sort of pick different ones so that you get that variation uh-huh well yeah. and this color is wonderful right through here do you remember what you used um uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, sometimes I have mud on my palette and then I'll add some color. And so I couldn't tell you. I use a lot of mud. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did an excellent job. I'm very pleased with what you've done. You must be very happy with this. I'm so happy with my progress. I am so glad I took the courses. Oh. I can't believe how much I've learned. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. that. Now I have a question for you. Okay. Um, you know, remember back when when you showed us a beautiful painting of of a uh, an ocean and a building, but we just did the reflection. Oh yeah. This, this was the reflection we did, right? Right. We did. I want to know if there's a lesson with the whole painting because I love that painting. <laughs> You know, that was, you know, I'll have to revisit that because that was actually my earlier work. That's what I used to do. It was much tighter and small brushes. And that's way before I even considered 
uh, teaching. I mean, that's a whole nother story, you know, like wow. the not, I never wanted to teach. I never wanted to travel. I know that I've, I've mentioned that before, but uh, now I've totally enjoyed my journey. And I will think about that. Now, that's such a different technique. That's done mostly wet on dry, that whole painting that we're talking about. Well, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And while we're talking, I want to tell you, the first thing I ever saw by you was the um the house with the mountain behind it because it was teaching how to use blossom oh. Oh, and yeah. i really wanted to learn how to do that oh, i love that painting and everyone who's seen it just raves about it oh that's fantastic i love that well you know what was so funny with that thing is that you know that's like the dreaded blossom everybody's like no i but instead of trying to fix it, how can you use it to your advantage? And so, and to really make it work for you. So I'm excited for you. That, thanks. Oh gosh, well thanks. Okay, so we'll continue with this. Let's go ahead and get at this. Go on to these. Now again, this artist is so loose in what they do and they, what, what's, Amazing when you have, um, you know, if, if we try to represent what we see and if we, we try too hard, it looks constricted. And here this artist is taking the idea and just doing it. And by just doing it, there's such freedom in it and it's more relatable than looking labored and constricted. So it's beautiful, excellent, excellent job through here. I like how you handled your background, your water's great, and it really allows room for the imagination. And the same thing in here too, wonderful. This is, I wasn't really sure if this was the waterfall or not, but it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't need to know what it is. I'm looking at the movement and the composition and the freedom of the strokes, it's outstanding. And then here too, we've got all these different, um, there's three of the same image and the background turned out nicely. The other thing that I'd like to suggest to you is to try, to try this on different paper too. This is done on arches, but it, we have a chat that came in. Let's see what this is. Um, Marty says, uh, I do a lot of forest and love learning uh, the water. Okay. Oh, is I, are you leaving, Marty? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not sure. Or is that, was that your painting? Let's see if she responds to that. And let's see, we got that. All right. Well, sorry. I'm not seeing the answer at the moment, but the uh the water the direction of the water you've accomplished that perfect this is really nice you really see the flow coming down here i remember my comment to this particular artist now is um i'm trying to blow this up a little bit so we can see it right over here in these areas again we want to be careful with things looking too straight so everything else has movement and even back here you could actually do a little bit by breaking it up if you want to you don't have to let's go ahead and move this over here but let's look at this. If we go ahead and even add some of this back here, it starts to push this area back and you can apply that basic idea to all of them. You don't need to do much, soften an edge. And what we'd like to do is try to eliminate this being so perfectly straight. Okay, just down there, just break it up a little bit. Or let's say you can't or it doesn't work to break it up, then how about if you add some rocks on the bottom? You know, that, that's another way of breaking it up. You can think about it. Just break up that space a little bit. But it's, you did a wonderful job. They're all wonderful. Okay, let's get out of that. 
And, oh, we have just one more in this series. Okay, so we discussed, uh, we were gonna talk about this one in the meeting, your rocks are great. The problem was we needed to uh, get a little bit more action in this water. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a few tools. So if I needed to, I might, I'm looking at the shapes of your shadows in here. So let's go ahead. I want to bring this rock out. I'm going to go ahead and go a little darker back there. Maybe break it up a little bit. I love your little white water or your little pool of water in there. I'm going to go a little bit darker through here. I'm trying to break up the space. I don't want that shape in there. Let's get some action in this water. So just by breaking up that line that you had there that starts to make that have a little more action and again the rock through here let's break it up a little bit just by having some different sizes in there i think can be really helpful okay so we're Getting some of these smaller rocks in here. I don't want to overdo that. And then it comes to this area. We just want to go ahead and add a little more of some definition in here. You've got the right idea, but it gets a little lost through here. So I'm thinking that that's probably going to be a rock. And just a, a few brush strokes so it has a little tiny bit of definition through here. So hopefully that makes a little something, just want a little definition, not too much. So I think you can understand what I'm saying by just looking at what I've done. Okay, because right through the middle here, it, it needs something and that line needs to be broken and it could use just a little more definition right around that rock there. It gets a little lost through there, okay. All right, then we're going to finish up on this one here. Oops, there we go. And then we have just a, I think we don't, I don't think we have much left. Let's take a look at this one, the crashing waves. Okay, I wanted to really try to make sure that I could get to everybody's painting if possible. Okay, this turned out really nice. And this was the painting that you, I mean, this is the example of that, is getting that looseness in the stroke that you were talking about that particular painting of the house and the water. I'll think about that, but I don't think it'll happen right away. But right here, you can see how there's more pressure and the light and more pressure and light. So this is the goal of that particular exercise. So this was very successful. This has a lot of wonderful action in here. I love it. And uh, I'm thinking, do we need to tone anything down? No, I don't think so. Now, if the artist is here and they didn't accomplish what they wanted, let me know. But I think this was very successful. So I think that one worked out very nicely. And this, I liked how you interpreted the it's a cliff with the ocean. You've got a great sky in the background, wonderful transition, nice horizon line in here, wonderful splash on your uh, rocks in the foreground. I think the only thing that I might be a little careful of is this, uh, when you have the cliff, having that dark line back here competes with the darker values in the foreground of those rocks. So you wanna be careful with that. I'm going to try just one thing here just to lighten it up a little bit let's see if that makes let's see what happens so if that was just a tad lighter we still have it back there but then your attention isn't necessarily back here it's looking the foreground and we know that this is in the distance so but you've got you're really on track this is wonderful i'm loving this okay yeah move on okay i think we covered all those i think i covered them all yep all right and then let's take a look at and if you have any questions uh go ahead and uh unmute yourself or put them in on the chat and i'll try to catch those 
Now this turned out really wonderful too. Oh, the my suggestion. Now I loved what they did in their background and the trees in the distance and the trees right here and the splash along the shore. My and this area right through here was wonderful. My only concern were these rocks in the foreground because I thought that they looked a little too dark. So and there, these two again are the same shape. Even though if you saw them that way, I would break it up a little bit by lifting maybe a little color out. I don't necessarily, if you love it, I don't want you to change anything if you're completely happy with it because you're the artist. But I just want to really bring the attention more into the background and not right here on these rocks. So even though the rocks are there, Okay, we have the chat. I think it might be the artist, so we'll take a look at that in just a sec. And you see how that ends up, we can see more of that background. Let's see if I can, let's see if this is the artist that has just responded here. Um, let's see. Okay, and then for Kristen with the ebooks, the ebook was is going to be uh, included in the next course that's level two that's where we're going to look at the photographs and try to interpret them into paintings so instead of me having the actual lessons laid out like i have we're going to have live meetings i'll do a demo we'll discuss the thing and then you'll be working on your painting so i i think it'll be a lot of fun to do that and even if you are um behind don't worry take your time and you can always come back in to another session when I run that and Roberta as far as scholarships I haven't yet I'm not sure I have thought about it and I wasn't really sure how to go about doing it so I, I ask is that I'm a senior on a very limited income oh okay and I blew like my whole my credit card on a couple of different um, art courses, yours and someone else's, pay per pay everything to get started, and uh, yeah, so just put that in your in your little bag of you know knowledge, and if you're ever open to giving scholarships, I will apply. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to find you so I can see you. Where are you? So, um there you are okay yeah. and it's roberta right yes yeah. all righty so i will think about that i just i really i'm gonna i'll think more about that i'd love to uh i'm just not sure how to handle that yet sure. i know i was joking but oh no i think it's a great idea you know, I think yeah. it's a really great idea, you know, uh, but then again, I put so much into the workshops too, that I'll have to see how I can make it where it's manageable for me. So, all right, we'll talk about that more later. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up though. I did make a note of it. So now Roberta, is this your painting by any chance? Oh, no. Okay. Alrighty, so anyway, for this painting, you can see it by going a little lighter right there. And then we have that darker contrast through here. Then we see the entire painting and not just that uh, dark rock. So just by doing that, I think that you can see. There we go, like that. Okay, then let's go on to the next one. All right, this one is in progress. Actually, I'm not sure if it's, if this is the same one, actually, I don't know. But anyway, here we have the brush strokes right up here. Uh, you're right on track. You're doing a great job. Your white are uh, the curve wave is working out nicely. Be careful that this doesn't end up being a completely solid line. You may well you started to break it up, which is good, and. So you're on track with that. You just need to continue and complete it down through the rest of the painting. And then here yeah, we, yeah. So which, which line were you saying is too straight? I thought that you should maybe break up. Let's take a look. See this, oh, oh this one was what my email to you. It yeah. was this one, the bottom part. Okay. 
Okay. Because I, when, as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, no, she, this, the top part's looking okay. It was the bottom part right through here. Just break it up a little bit. Okay. Just even if you soften that up a little bit. All right. Okay. But you're doing great. And do you have any other questions on that? No, I like the way it's going so far. It's looking good. I, I love this. Okay, and then this one here too, this, this ended up uh, reminding me more of an arch, which I loved. I think when, when I responded to the artist, they said they, they didn't think of it as an arch. <laughs> it was more like a tide pool, but I, I'm thinking about Mendocino area, and so that's why I thought of this. So you're right on track, wonderful color through here. You handled this very nicely. Your clouds look great. The horizon line is good. Even though that bled up, that's fine. That's not a problem. You've got the right idea with your values in the distance. Uh, you may want to just add a little bit of a line right through here. Tad, just to break it up tiny, tiny bit, maybe. Let's take a look at that just really quickly. So if you wanted to, you can see how minimal that I'm a little bit. That depends if you want that to push back more or what you want to do with this area. But in general, this is looking beautiful. You've got to, you're right on track with that. And then we'll go, and your colors are great. And this is nice too. I like that feeling, that soft area through here. I like that little dry area. You're having, having a wonderful mix of the um, layering and the color. So that's looking good. I am debating whether or not that should be a tad lighter. And that what I'm talking about is the rocks. So, because I love your color through the, uh, the tidal area. So I'm just curious that if we broke up that big rock a little bit, so if it's, I don't want it to be too light because that contrast between the dark rocks and the white water really brings out that intensity in that water. But just something to think about right through here, just a little bit maybe. And then right through here, you've got a great wave that's breaking, good horizon line, wonderful land in the distance. But let's take a look at this area right through here. I think it could use, um trying to find a color that would work let's go ahead and try to okay i'm going to extend that ocean in the horizon just a little bit over do you see that little bit there then we start to see this more and it doesn't disappear so we can just look at that also right through here you may want to just add a little bit of a darker color right through here, just a brush stroke, not necessarily this color, just break it up a little bit, just like you did here over in this area. But I think the big thing would be this and consider lightening that. So let's go ahead and clear that so you can see it. If you like it, great. And if you don't, um, if you like the idea, that's great, you can change it. If you don't and wanna leave it this way, that's fine, you're the artist. Okay, so we look at that. Personally, I think that looks a little more complete if you could do that. All right, and then I think we have just two more. And right here, good job with your sky and the land in the distance and your ocean over here. You're right on track here. As you're doing this, try to have more of a curl as the wave curls up so it's not so straight. That's a minor detail for this. And you've got the right idea with your rocks. So you handled this exercise very well. You did a beautiful job. Right on track. And then here, this looks good too. I love this. Great sky, good ocean, your curling wave. And again, I think of this more as a, um, a uh, arch rock. I think that turned out very well. You may want to add just a couple strokes of color right through see if I can get over there because this area right here is a little flat so and I don't want to use that little pen but I'll just I'll use this for now just to give you an idea just using a few strokes like these strokes that you have over here on the left hand side just let's look at this I'm gonna expand that window out a little bit 
Okay, see these little brush strokes over here? What they are are light, transparent brush strokes glazed upon each other. I think that it would work very nicely if you brought some of that idea over into this area. So that way it would give it more depth. So I think that's, that's my opinion. <laughs> Okay, everyone. So that is pretty much it on all the um, on all the paintings that we were going to look at. Do you think we should do one more meeting? I, I think we have it in the chat. I'll have to take a look to see what you all responded. Do you think that we should have one more meeting next week? Okay. All right. Because then that would be the end of it, and then we'll move on to the other one. I see Marty. I see your head. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you so you can say, now I hear you. <laughs> if no, I think it's fabulous. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and unmute. Uh, this, this can be a mistake. I was going to unmute all of you. Let's see if I can. So be aware, I am unmuting you, so be careful that uh, if you have things going on in the background, because we're gonna be wrapping this up. I'm trying to unmute you. If you see your microphone has a little X through it, then I wasn't able to. So, and I guess some I guess of you some are. Of you are. Ugh, here's the problem I hear myself. We love you, Birgit. Okay, well, thank you. I love all of you, too. Thank you, everyone. So I will it'll, yeah. I plan on next week. I'll put it on the schedule, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you for joining me. Bye, friends. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.